This lesson deals with Kirchhoff's voltage law. You can find these notes in the ECE 201 ebook in chapter 2, starting at page 18. Before we talk about Kirchhoff's voltage law, let's go back and review an idea from the last chapter. Find voltage as the derivative of energy with respect to charge. Now, derivatives are changes in a variable, and when that change is taken infinitesimally small, it becomes a derivative. So let's just go back to this idea of a change in energy for a change in charge. So we can calculate the change in energy by multiplying the voltage times the change in charge. So if we know the voltage and we know the change in charge, then we can calculate how much energy is gained or lost. Now when you move through a drop in voltage, you give up energy as we stated in chapter one. You can think of this in an analogous way as a train with a coal car, where that coal car is dumping its coal and then leaving. So it's giving up its energy. So when you move through a drop in voltage, the charges give up their energy pretty much like a coal car is giving up its coal. But if you were to take these charges through a rise in voltage, they would pick up energy. And the energy they pick up is the value of the voltage times the amount of charge that you move through that rise in voltage. This would be like the coal car picking up coal now. Now let's, let's state Kirchhoff's voltage law. The algebraic sum of the voltage rises equals the algebraic sum of the voltage drops around any loop or closed path. In chapter two at the beginning, we talked about the definition of a loop. It's also called sometimes a closed path. Okay, why would this be true? Let's just construct a simple example here. Suppose I got five elements and I label the voltages across them really arbitrarily. And I take a clump of charge and I move it through a closed path or a loop. So here we've got a drop in voltage. So the amount of energy I gave up would be that charge times that voltage V4. Likewise with V5. Now when I come back on the return path here to come back to our starting point, then I have a rise in voltage, a rise in voltage, and a rise in voltage. So the energy that I pick up is that charge times those three voltages. So if I start at a point, come back to that point, the energy that I lost would have to be equal to the energy that I gained. And that's a conservation of energy. Okay, now let's take those two results and set them equal to each other. So the energy that we lost was the change in charge times V4, change in charge times V5, and what we picked up was that change in charge times V3, change in same change in charge times V2, same change in charge times V1. But the charge is common to each of the terms here, so they cancel. And what we're left with are the rises in voltage equaling the drops in voltage. And that's Kirchhoff's voltage law. Here's an example of a circuit that I have three loops in it. Here's one loop, here's another loop, here's a third loop. And what that means again, there's a closed path. I start at a point and I come back to that point without going through the same element twice. I do all these in a clockwise direction. And that's because in the next chapter we'll talk about writing an algorithm. It's based upon doing Kirchhoff's voltage law in a particular way. You can also do this in a counterclockwise fashion, but we're just going to do it one way and just be consistent or maybe make it easier for you to remember. So let's start at a point, let's go around this first loop or close path, and let's just add up the rises and set them equal to the drops. So going around here, I have a rise of V1, a drop of V2, a drop in V3. So I've got, that's my equation. Now, if I knew one or more of these voltages, I could solve for the remaining voltages or relationships or voltages. Um, and we'll do that actually in the next chapter and a little bit in this chapter too. Two, I'm just gonna go anywhere, start anywhere. Let's start over here now. So I have a drop of V4, drop of V5, and a rise of V3. So these are the my drops, and add them together, and I only have one rise in voltage. Let me go around the outer loop here. Start here, drop of V5, rise of V1, drop of two, drop of four. So two, four, and five added together, only one rise in voltage. The relationships that are true at every instant in time, and it allows us to solve for voltages if we can figure out one or more of the other ones. The textbook also has another form of pure cost voltage law, and let me just state it and then explain it. The voltage drops are taken as positive, and the voltage rises are taken as negative, or on a closed path, then the algebraic sum of the voltages is zero. Be adding up the drops and really subtracting the rises in voltage. Again, the way you identify that is as you're going around a closed path, the first sign that you see, if it's positive, you're going through a drop. If you see a negative sign, you're going through a rise in voltage. Now, why would that be true? Let's go back to the previous proof. Let's make everything a drop in voltage. So two, four, and five were drops, and now let's change the sign of three change the sign of two, change the sign of one. I'm gonna put a plus sign here and a minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, and then change the sign of the quantity, V3, V2, and V1. Now we'll use our previous theorem that the sum of the rises equals the drops, but there aren't any rises anymore. We got rid of those, and so zero, and then the drops are four, five, minus V3, minus V2, minus V1. Now if you put this on the other side of the equation, you have the last result. 
Let's just somebody, in some sense, playing with the algebra here. Go back and redo that last example. Okay, so if we start here, I see a minus sign. That tells me I got a rise in voltage, so I'm going to subtract the V1. I'm going to add V2, and I'm going to add V3. Same equation we had before, just having this on the other side of the equation. Go around loop 2, I've got a drop of V4, so plus V4. I'm going to add V5, and I'm going to subtract V3. And all that's going to equal zero. And that's kind of convenient sometimes in proving other theorems that have a zero on one side of the equation. But again, it's the same algebraic results, just putting this on the other side to get the equations on the last page. And lastly, the outer loop here. I've got a drop of two. So I'm going to add two, add four, add five, subtract V1. Same result. Which one should you use? Well, actually, both will give you the same answer. I'll tend to use the first form. I find it a little bit easier to, to do for a lot of examples. But there are times I'll use the second form too. Let's do an example. Let's say I know some of the voltages in a circuit. Use Kirchhoff's voltage law to find the unknowns. Look at the loops here. I've got one loop here, another loop here. It goes through the outside loop. But around this loop, I know two of the three variables. Let's go around the loop here. So the rise in voltage is V sub X. So V sub X is a rise. Then this is a rise in voltage, but it has a value of minus two. And then there's a drop of six. So the two rises equals the drop. It makes V sub X eight volts. Go around this loop, I know again two of the three. So I have a drop of V sub Y, a drop of one, and a rise of six. So six would be VY plus one. So V sub Y is five. Let's do the alternative form. I subtract the rise in voltage, subtract this rise in voltage, add the drop in voltage. Minus V sub X, again, we're going to take a minus times the quantity, a minus times the quantity, and a plus times the quantity. Again, you get the same result, eight. Around this loop, I've got a rise in voltage here, so I'm going to subtract 6. I'm going to add V sub Y, and I'm going to add 1. And again, I get 5 volts. The way to do the alternative form of Kirchhoff's voltage law is to go around a loop, and then the first sign that you see goes with the quantity that's here. So instead of subtracting, I just remember first sign I see, and then the quantity. First sign that I see, and then the quantity. The two minus signs will cancel here. The first sign that I see, and the quantity. That's convenient, too, for, for solving problems in a quick way without having to write a lot of equations. And that's Kirchhoff's voltage law.